All right, so we're going to do the uh, hair, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take our last file that we used before uh, for our clothing, and I've just put the clothes on a separate layer. That way I can just turn it off uh, and just focus on um, the hair itself, okay? Now the starting process for hair is that we need to define the shape of where the hair is going to be. So typically what we do is kind of like the clothes, is we would duplicate this shape and then we would outline um, a portion of this head and then shape it. So what I've done is I have this cap and I'll give you the cap file so you can just use this with yours that we don't have to regenerate this, okay? Now if we wanted to have something like a beard um, or a mustache or neck hair or you know anything, eyebrows, um, we could create individual pieces for those or we could all uh, keep it all into the same shape, okay? Um, and sometimes you'll even just break the whole head off and just paint it right on there because it makes it a little bit easier just instead of focusing on the entire body, okay? So uh, what, we're get, what we have first is we have this and what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create curves on here to define the shape of the hair, all right? So I could go into the CB curve tool here and start drawing curves, but uh, the amount of curves we're going to need is going to be quite a bit, all right? So we want to kind of speed up that process. So I'm going to take my cap and I'm just going to verify that all my stuff is frozen here. So I'm going to freeze my transforms. Okay, I'm going to make sure I deleted the history in case there's anything kind of hanging out. I've also made sure that on this cap that the UVs are laid out. You can see the UVs laid out right here. And so we're ready to go. So we're going to use XGen. Okay, so I'm going to isolate the cap using the um, isolate and then I'm going to go to show isolate select auto load new objects and then I'm going to grab the cap go to xgen and create a description inside here I'm just going to give this a name so I'll call this um, guy hair okay I'm going to use groomable splines um, this spline here is typically for longer hair I'm going to use these groomable splines because this is something, um, our guy, I'm imagining he's a guy, um, he would have the shorter hair. So I'm going to use that and hit create. Okay. Also, the shorter hair is a lot easier to set up um, as opposed to the uh, longer hair. Okay. Now it didn't turn in, so I'm just going to unisolate select and then grab all that stuff and then re-isolate and there we go. Okay. So now what I have here are all these little yellow um, splines. And what I want to do is I want to shape them. Okay, so I'm going to come down here first into this uh, XGen tab. If that ever gets away, you just go here and say open the XGen window. And I'm going to go to my length and just make this a bit longer. Okay, so this is imagine how long the guy's hair is. Okay, buzz cut, no big deal. Boom, there it is. Uh, but I'm going to give him a little bit of style so, you know, there's actually a purpose to using um, and hair. So with these I can then go through and just like you would in the morning I'm going to use hopefully in the morning uh, this pose and I'm just going to brush the hair. Okay. If I hold down B and click and drag it makes the brush bigger and then I can style more at a time. So what I'm doing is just shaping what I want his hairstyle to look like. So uh, feel free to kind of you know go a little bit crazy with this um, so that you can uh, get a cool hairstyle that you want. Now you have to kind of understand a little bit about the ergonomics of how hair uh, is placed on the head. Typically at the back of the head like so um, is where all the hairs kind of branch outward unless you're like spiking it back. So if you're like in this case I'm gonna go down here and then I'm gonna go back here okay and then on the front I'm gonna swoop this over so you can see how I'm getting this kind of like circular pattern happening right at the back of the head. Okay. And I'm just going to just keep painting this. Maybe make the brush a little bit bigger. All right, on this side I'm going to go and swoop it down this way. Across. Don't worry about getting every single uh, hair perfectly aligned. We're going to smooth it out before we go on to the the stage where it's kind of like set in stone. Okay. All right. 
right, so there we go. All right, smaller brush so I can get in these tighter areas. Swoop that stuff down. All right, there we go. So now that should be good. All right, so I always check the edges because sometimes you get these little flyaways that are just hanging out at the edges. Um, should be good. Uh, and then I'm going to go under this um, smooth. And what I can do with smooth is just go through and just kind of smooth this transition out. Okay, so I'm just kind of going over this. And you'll see that it takes these areas where, you know, the hair is going in several different directions and just blends it nicer together. Okay, I could also go through um, and I can change the length of this. So if I decided that, hey, the back of the hair, um, if you're a guy, you've had haircuts before and they always or typically shave the back a little bit shorter. So I can go to length here and my goal length is like how uh, high I want to get this. Um, so right now I'm at three. So let's say I want to go down to um, one, okay? And then for my increment, I'm going to set this to negative 0.25, all right? And now as I do this, you can see that the hairs are getting shorter. Okay, so now I'm kind of tapering it into the rest of the hairstyle. Okay, and again, I'm not going to be too uh, cautious about making sure it's perfectly lined up because I can go back and again use that smooth tool to smooth this out. Okay, so I'm kind of good there, so I'll smooth this out and it'll help transition all those middle pieces so it doesn't look so drastic. Okay. All right, so that's good there. Uh, looking around, seeing if I like it. I do. Cool. All right. So uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this I button. And this is going to update some stuff. We're not seeing it here, but if I switch back to unisolate, you'll see that we actually have these little hairs uh, in place. Okay. All right. And you could actually use this as a uh, hairstyle. This is X Gen. Um, but uh, there's other ways to do it, okay? And I prefer using um, N hair for this, okay? So it gives you a better way to kind of check it out. I could up the density, uh, but you'll see that it's going to actually add, you know, extra hairs there, so I'm not going to do that. And because I changed this and I hit this, it's going to re put it all back to where it was. Oops, and now we're crashing. Let me fix that and I'll be right back. All right, <clears throat> and we're back. All right, so uh, you don't want to mess with these settings after the fact is what I was trying to say, um, but that didn't work out good. So uh, I'm going to save as, and we'll call this hair startup. Hair startup 001. There we go. Okay, so now that we have this uh, hairstyle here, what we need to do is take this and convert it into curves that we can use. Okay, so uh, we could go under primitives here, and right now this density is set to one. I could lower this and refresh it, and then I would have less of those. Okay, because that's what's going to be converted are these little blue things. Um, 0 0.05. Okay, so I want to have a good number here. So 0.2. Let's go with one. Let's just leave it at one. Um, still too much. 0.75. Let's go with 0.75. Okay. I'm just looking at the amount here, and the, just like everything else, the more stuff you have going on, um, the longer it's going to take. So actually, 0.6 it seems like it's a good value. All right. So now that we have this, I'm going to go under my previews and outputs, and uh, it says spline segments. I'm going to turn that to three. And down here under operation, I'm going to say create guides. Okay. And it'll say how many percent of these things you want to create. I'm going to say 100. And then I'll hit create. Now, if I go to my outliner, 
I should see that I have this collection, guy hair, and then under this hair cap guy hair, I have all these guides. Okay, and there's actually do, 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 388 guides that it's created. Okay, now that I have the guides, I can go under uh, utilities and go to guides to curves and say I want to create these curves. Okay, so then I turn that off. I go here and I isolate. You'll see that now we have all these curves that we can use as our curves for our uh, guy's hair. Okay, wonderful. All right, and it looks like you know as far as like a good representation of the hair, that looks pretty good. All right, so now I'm going to go through my outliner, and I'm just going to take this other stuff, this um, wig collection, and I'm just going to make it on a layer. Okay, I have these other layers I get rid of. Delete selected layers. I'll assign it to that one and just hide it. There we go. Now you'll see that when I hit it, that my other hairs, these other curves, disappeared as well. Okay, because right now they're still linked. All right. So when I pull this back on, I can grab these, and then those guys will show up. Okay, so what I'm also going to do is duplicate these curves and then grab my X groom and I'm just going to call these original hair curves and I'm going to drop those on that layer too. Okay, now it still wants to hide them for some reason, which is odd. Um, let me take these out of here. There we go. So I just grabbed all the curves and hit Shift P a couple times, and then I hit Control G to group them and get them out of the X groom uh, group. Okay, so now they're in my own group. All right. So now that we have these guys, um, here are curves. Uh, what I can do is I can take this uh, the curves that I have here, Shift click this hair cap, and then go under the N hair. And the hair, there it is, and go to make selected curves dynamic. Okay, and it'll ask me output curves. Uh, that's fine. All right, so I'm going to make the curves dynamic. And what it's going to do is it's going to take all these curves and the hat and make this an end hair system that will then become dynamic. Okay. So now we have these curves that were created, and if I go to my outliner, you can see uh, here's our original curves. We have this new hair system, and now we have these output curves. Okay, if I hit play, you'll see that my output curves are going to start to go crazy. All right, and the reason they're going crazy is because this guy is um, uh, he was uh, an end rigid. Apparently, I removed that, um, but their settings for this end hair are just kind of set to different properties than we want okay so it's trying to relax itself and so it kind of like freaks out and we lose our hairstyle but we'll get it back okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab any one of these guys and under the hair system we're gonna scroll down to do, 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 uh, dynamic properties and we're gonna change some of these things so stretch resistance uh, I'm gonna just say no stretch okay just get rid of that and then compression resistance, I'm going to lower this to 0.5. Bend resistance, 0.5. Okay. Now I rewind it and hit play again. Okay. We're still getting this because we have some other stuff going on. So let's go down. Uh, right now, they're all set to being very stiff. All right. Um, also, they're not being attracted to that start curve. Okay. So I want them to be attracted. So I'm going to pull this value up. Okay. All the way to 1. Now this attraction scale is basically saying that the ends of the curve, the part that's touching um, these little follicle red things here, um, those are going to be full on attracted, but then the tips of it are not going to be as attracted. That's why it's going down like this. So as I hit play, you'll see that we're getting it in a somewhat relaxed state. You can see it's just kind of bouncing around a little bit and doing that. Okay. Now, for a guy's hair, it typically doesn't move a whole lot, um, unless you're going through like an air tunnel or driving in a car or something like that. Um, it doesn't move a whole lot as he's walking. 
So I'm going to actually pull this attraction scale up a bit. And now you'll see how we're getting it closer there. It's still bouncing around a lot. I'm going to start to turn the damping up. Okay. And let me go up to my dynamic properties. Um, go down to my dynamic properties and turn this damping up as well. I also turn my drag up a bit. There we go. So now we're coming to rest a lot sooner. Okay. Now if we were to render this, we would get nothing. It would just be the cap uh, showing up here. Um, so what we want to do is we want to go to our hair system and under N hair, I want to say assign paint effects brush to hair. Okay, and what I get is this little paint effects thing. It's hard to see, but it's there. It's like a little green thing. And I'm going to go to my uh, hair system. And at the very top is this clump and hair shape. Inside here, I'm going to go to my hairs per clump. Right now it's only one hair per follicle. And I'm going to pull this up some. Okay, it's not changing anything apparently. Uh, but that's because our clump width is set to zero. Okay, so there's 21 hairs right here. Uh, but we can't see them because they're all on top of each other. So as I start to stretch this out, you can see how we're getting those 21 hairs are now stretching out and fitting. So as I zoom out, you can see here's our hairstyle. Okay, so we can add more hairs to this, make the clump width bigger if we need to, and we'll start to fill in this head of hair. All right, now because these are uh, properties that can be changed at any time, this doesn't matter. So I can just keep this lower for now and keep my um, clump width kind of down for now just so I can see what the individual follicles are doing. All right. Now if I look at the tip of this, you'll see that um, this clump width, it's basically like a circle shape and it's tapering down into this little nubbin, but the nubbin is like perfectly flat. Okay, That flatness is coming from this thinning. If I take this thinning and I adjust it, it offsets each one of these little hair follicles or these little hairs uh, so it doesn't look like it's perfectly flat. Also this clump width scale works kind of like the one below it where here is the clump width so it's 0.434 is right at the base of it but then at the tip it's getting less. So you can see how I can adjust this. Okay. So depending on the kind of hairstyle we want that's what we could uh, we could do. All right. Also it looks pretty blocky. If you look at the hair it goes up, 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 up. You know it's like do 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 do. If I go to my subsegments and I start to pull these up, you'll see that the hairs will become nice and smooth. Okay. So I have that going. Uh, let's see what else. Just for fun, let's see what it's going to look like when we set this to two. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. If we had an ear right here, that would work. Okay, um, so for now I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, we have this at about 74. We could adjust it, like I said before. We could adjust our sub segments to at any time, and we could adjust our um, clump width at any time. Also, our thinning. We decide we want to add some thinning in there. All right, some of these properties I typically don't touch. Uh, they're very sensitive. Stuff like clump curl. If I just pull this, it's going to curl all the hair. Okay, so if I wanted him to have, you know, this curly hair I could use that or I could use this um, like that where I'm changing the curl at the tips but not at the base. Uh, there's flatness I don't typically play with that. Um, here's some collisions uh, we don't need to play with that right now. Um, it's good. Those are all good there. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go to my nucleus right there and I'm a nucleus, I'm just going to verify that my substeps are still 12 and 16, my time attributes and scale attributes, um, I reset to 1 and 1. Okay, I'm still starting this at negative 100 um, because I want to um, have that set up where it um, relaxes and then goes into what it needs to. Um, but we would only render from 0 on or 1 on. Okay. So uh, I'm going to do a little preview and see how this is looking. So I'm going to go to my um, panels and I've set up this hair cam. And what the hair cam allows me to do 
you know, is just follow the guy around. Okay, I'll just adjust it. So now that I have this set up, um, I can save it. There we go. And then I'm just going to uh, hit play. And what we're going to see is that the hair is going to come to a relaxed position, which is what we want it to do. But it's not going to move with the character. Okay? Unlike end cloth, um, he's, it's not really attached to anything. It's just kind of like this floating uh, mass. Okay? It looks like the hair is floating up. Well, he's just coming down. Okay? And you can see that it definitely isn't attached to his head. All right? So I'm going to go in the outliner again. And I'm going to grab um, these output curves. Okay, and if I'm rewound and I move it, um, that's not the one I want. I want the hair curves. There we go. And the hair curves will move the entire hair group. Okay, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to parent it to this little joint right in the middle here. Okay, so I just grab that, shift click the joint, and hit P to parent. So now as I hit play, it'll actually move with my piece of geometry. So as my um, skin comes to a relaxed position, you can see that the hair is now moving with it. If you keep an eye right where these hairs are right here, you can see that it's definitely following uh, the character. Okay, um, This little bit right here is the skull cap. We can just throw that on a new layer and hide it. Okay. Now what we're going to look for as it plays is we want to make sure that the hair isn't freaking out. Okay. Right now we're going to start walking and you'll see that the hair is just going to start going crazy. It's just bouncing left and right and left and right and up and down and all over the place. Okay. So what's happening is we have a lot of dynamic stuff happening inside the hair. Um, there's a lot of curves. Every single one of those curves inside here, every one of these little follicle uh, things are just going crazy, okay? And it's trying to calculate each one and they're bumping into each other and it's just a mess, all right? So what we want to do is we want to simplify this, all right? So we don't need uh, 400 follicles on here all trying to be dynamic and all trying to calculate what they're what they're doing. Uh, we only need like maybe 50 or so, okay? So what we're going to do is um, if you didn't find your follicles very easily, it's just inside of your walk reference, okay? So if you just open this up and you go into the spine and you follow the spine down to the end, you'll eventually find the hair curves group, okay? And in the hair curves group are all the follicles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this and I'm just going to grab about 50 of these, okay? And I'm just making it random and I'm not even counting this. Um, you could, but I'm just kind of going through and grabbing randomly every fifth or eighth one, you know. The more random you make this, um, the better off uh, you'll be. If you try to get too patterny, it may turn out to look like his hair is moving in uh, a wig-like form. Okay, so is that 50? I don't know, but we can start there and see how it looks and go from that, okay? So what I want to do is I want to grab the other hair follicles, okay? Not these ones that I have selected. I want to grab the opposite. So I'm going to go up here to my selection mask, and I'm going to turn this to all objects off. Then I'm going to go under this one, uh, right-clicking, and I'm going to say follicles. That way I can hold down shift and marquee the head, okay? And you'll see that that grabs the opposite. All right. So then what I can do is inside my channel box is go to where this says dynamic mode or simulation mode and change this to passive. Okay. So what that means is that um, these other ones that we have selected, these guys, let me isolate them so we can see them. Uh, these guys here um, are going to be my active ones. These are the ones that are going to be doing all the major uh, motion of what the hair is doing dynamically. Okay. And then the other ones, these guys are just going to follow along with what the other ones are doing. Okay, so that's what that passive and active um, setup means. So now, if we go back to our hair cam and we save and we do a play blast, let's say, uh, I'll pause it and come back when it's.
Okay, so now that we have our play blast done, you can see that it does kind of flicker uh, a bit more than I would like. Okay, if I go here and there, you can see the hair is just kind of jostling around uh, quite a bit. Okay, so this is where we come into our properties for the end hair. Let me turn all my objects back on so I can select it. And we start to go through um, our forces here and adjust them. So I might need to take my damping up a little bit more. Maybe I'll take my drag down some. Um, I don't want to make the mass too heavy um, because then it'll like be more like uh, the definition they give is more like chains as opposed to something that's you know hairy. Make it five. Okay, I'll turn my motion drag up a little bit as well. Okay, um, turbulence we don't need to worry about. Okay, so the next part of this is you're just playing with these numbers to get something that looks um, pleasant on the eye. Okay, when you're doing a still, it's a lot easier, but when you get this motion, it, it takes some time to, to tweak it. Uh, we can also come and play with this start curve attract. Maybe if I just get rid of this. It's going to stay locked in there, but it's no longer dynamic. It's just um, it's just locking it into that position. Okay, I can also turn this attraction damp up or down. Sometimes, if you have the damping up way too high, um, it just starts to behave too funny. Uh, so you got to you know play that game of play blasting and checking, play blasting and checking. Um, here's my stiffness scale. I can also pull this down so it's very stiff at the base and then looser at the end. Uh, stretch resistance is good. These are good here. Okay. Uh, I could add a little bit more friction, so maybe one. Okay. So that's the next part of this is just to go through and try to get something that looks um, decent as far as how it's uh, animating. Okay. Once we have that, then we can start to deal with the rendering phase. Okay. So I'm pretty confident you'll be able to play with the settings um, to get the animation correct. So now let's go through the rendering and see what it's going to look like. So I'm pretty sure I must have hidden my lights because I don't see anything. Nope. There's my lights. Oh, <clears throat> I'm in perspective one, that's why. Uh, right click, perspective one. And now we're actually going to see some sort of hair on top of his head. Um, and then we can tweak what those um, hairs are going to look like. Um, because his clothing is kind of. Um, it's, it's flat and it's not, you know, textured or patterned or anything like that. I'm going to try to keep the hair um, in this kind of stylized fashion as well. Um, you could keep it like this um, and see how it goes. Uh, but I think that the other way would look kind of neat as well. So you can see there's the hair. Um, and it looks pretty, pretty decent. You know, I haven't adjusted anything as far as how it's rendering or what it's looking like. Um, so I can definitely adjust some things to make it... Um, a bit different, uh, like I said, more stylized. Um, so I'm just going to leave it just like that. Okay, so we'll keep this window here. I'm gonna click the hair. And one of the things I'm going to adjust is this hair width. So by taking the width up, it's going to increase the size of each individual strand of hair. Okay, so it's going to start off, or it's going to be uh, 0.2. Further down, there's this setting that controls um, the width, and it, but just like this one, it's going to start off at point two, and then it's going to become a little bit pointier. Okay, so this is going to look more um, cartoony, uh, but it'll look kind of cool. Okay, now because we've taken this up, I may want to come and take the clumps down. 
Yeah, it's definitely looking a little bit too clumpy right there. So let me take this down. Let's say 30. Okay, and I can also come down here to hair width scale. And you can see it's going to stay that 0.2 all the way to this point, And then it's going to taper off. Okay. So maybe I'll do that. That might be kind of neat as well. All right, I think 0.2 is probably too high. If we look at these, you can see it's doing exactly what I said. Um, it's starting off bigger and then tapering to that point. So let's maybe take this to maybe 0.12. I'm going to take a look at it again. I want to create just like thicker hairs, um, but I don't want it to be uh, too chunky. Okay, for the length of hair he has here, they can get um, too wide at the bottom and look funny. Um, I just want it to look like thick strands of hair. I'm starting to like the way that looks there. Uh -huh. Yeah, that looks kind of neat. Okay, I can probably still go down a little bit further. Point five, let's say. I'm about to run into this little chunk right here. And because I'm lowering it now, I may have to come up here and increase the amount of them just so I don't have any big gaps inside there. Okay, so as this is going, all of these settings here are for the entire hair system, like as a group. Um, I can grab, just like we did before where we grabbed the follicles, I can grab individual follicles and edit those properties as well. So I could take one hair and make that width really big, uh, or make the thinning on that follicle different than the follicle hairs on the other one. Oh. I believe I want a point zero five and not point five. Um, so uh, we can adjust properties individually per follicle if we wanted to as well. Now because we're only dealing with certain ones that are active, those are the ones that we want to play with. We, the passive ones aren't going to be doing anything. Um, yeah, that looks better. It's like spaghetti, like yarn hair. Okay, and that's actually it looks like a good amount of hair too. Um, we don't have anything, you know, just really crazy going on there. It looks neat. Okay, so what I was saying before about grabbing individual ones is, let's say I grab, oh, I'm in perspective one. Let's say I go in here and I grab one of these. You'll see that there's these blue um, items on the head. Those are the passive follicles. Okay, and if I grab the red ones, those are the active ones. Okay. So if I grab one of these active ones uh, and I go to the follicle shape here, here's where we've changed that from dynamic to passive. Okay, we just did it over here so we could do all of them at the same time. Uh, we could also change it to static if we wanted zero motion at all. If we wanted his hair just to stay exactly like this as he's moving. Okay, and if we get to the point where it's just, you know, unmanageable, we can grab all the follicles, make them static, boom, we're done. Okay, um, so that's uh, an option as well. Um, I can take these curves up to a degree of 3, 2 if I need to, or take it down to 1, and this is how smooth that curve is going to be. Um, this is a neat button here because it does so much cool stuff. We hit braid. It's not going to show it on this guy because he's short hair, but what it's going to do is it's going to, instead of having all the uh, hairs come out and just go down, it's going to have the hairs twist around each other, which is uh, pretty cool. Okay, and then here's all those other things we could turn on this override and adjust the length, the damping, the stiffness, adjust the clump width, the curl multiplier. Okay, uh, just for that individual one, which is, like I said, pretty uh, neat thing that we can go into that level of editing. Okay, so um, that's it for the rendering part. Once we're happy with the way this is looking and we're like, cool, this is exactly what we want it to look like. Uh, we'll grab the hair, and I like to do this through my hair cam. So we grab the hair, save of course before we do anything, and we go to the end cache and we create a new uh, cache.
And I have to go back to that because I had an option set. Create my cache. And here, guy. I'm going to say evaluate every one frame. Save every one frame. Time slider. There we go. And then I'm going to replace uh, the existing one. All right, so I'm going to let that go. Um, and then we'll adjust some other stuff. All right, so it just finished doing the cache. Um, so now I can scrub through this thing. Maybe. All right, for some reason it's not liking my uh, end cache. So um, I'm just going to leave it as is. So I would just do play blast, make sure I like it, and then render this thing out. Um, it was working and now it's not, so I'll have to tinker around with it and see. Um, like I said, a lot of this is just going to be tweaking uh, dynamic properties, playing with these settings here, playing with these settings here, um, until you get something that is pleasant to look at. Okay, And like I said, if it comes down to it, you could just take the um, the... the follicle stuff. Let me go into my outliner and grab a follicle so you can see it. I'm grabbing all your follicles and just making them all static and just letting that animate with them. It won't be bouncing around but uh, if it comes down to it I mean that's a way to work around it. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, that's what I'm going to do is just let this play. Um, render it out. I have my stuff already set up here. 1 through 200. Um, now because I'm doing this at uh, 1 to 200, what I have to do in order to get this to look right is um, I'll have to let this play until we get to frame 0. And just to make sure we get there, I'm just going to set this to frame, I'll set it to 1. I believe that's where my stuff is set to, starting at frame 1, yeah. And then I'm going to make sure that my nucleus... Uh, not my nucleus, my playback um, looping is set to 1, so there we go. That way it just gets to 1 and then it stops. Okay, so I need this to start at 1 in the exact spot that um, his hair is at. See here it doesn't look bad because we're not moving a whole lot, but once we start moving, that's when you know it gets a bit trickier. Okay, so right here is where I want this hair to start. Alright, so I'm gonna grab the hair. I'm gonna go to N solver initial state set from current. Uh, no N object selected. I gotta grab the um, hair system. There we go. There we go. Um, I did, instead of doing the initial state set from current, um, I did the n hair um, set start position from current. Okay, so um, that's where I want to start this. And if I go into my nucleus and I make sure that my nucleus's start time is set to frame one now. Now we can just go here to frame one to 222. Oops, move my hair cam. And then we should be good to go right from there because our hair is going to start right here exactly where this is at. So that'll be good. Okay. So it took a little bit of work around but that works. And when you're dealing with stuff that's dynamic sometimes you just have to figure out you know the way to work around it to get it to do what you want to do because no scene is um, ever going to be the same exact ideal scene. All right, so to render this, I'm going to switch back to my perspective camera. 
and just make sure he's in the right spot like that Need something more from the side okay and I'm gonna see if there's anything on this camera still there's still that uh, point constraint so if I hit next frame there we go he's still in shot so I think I'll just rotate him a touch Let me take that point constraint off and just put him in the right spot and then do the constraint again. There we go. Again, I want to fill uh, the scene pretty good with him. And then I go to my hip, control click my perspective, and then I go to constrain point, maintain offset, XYZ. Uh, we could just do the X direction. Uh, or the Z direction. Let me see which one is his moving one. It is the Z. All right, so I was wrong there. Let me rewind this, and we'll go to the outliner and delete that point constraint. Grab the hips, control click perspective, constrain point, and just set that back to Z. There we go. Now we're walking with them. Okay, and then uh, for rendering, obviously we want to turn the clothes back on. So now he's fully dressed for a night in the town. His hair is kind of freaking out right at the beginning. Uh, but again, that's just because my settings are not where they need to be. Okay, so I would tweak my settings, get them set up, whammo bammo. All right, even if it takes going to, you know, negative 20 or so and letting it, you know, preamp to that. Um, if my cache doesn't work, my cache should have worked. It's worked before. Um, but then we can play with it from there. You can see the hair just kind of escapes. And gradually makes its way back onto his head. Okay. Um, I could also make him, he's not really a, a uh, an active or a passive body. I can make him a passive collider as well and just make sure that I turn down my thickness. And that might help in some of the issues of the hair going crazy. Okay, So I'm going to fix this up. Um, you should have plenty of information as to how to um, do yours. Uh, if you run into these issues, you know we'll figure it out. We'll work on it. Um, but I'm just going to fix mine and hope that you don't have the same uh, issues that I'm having. Okay, so there we go and good luck.